It's in the first thousand minutes of life that mother-baby connections are made. Uh, there are some things happening in the baby and there are other things happening in the mother. The first thing that the baby needs is to transition to extra uterine life. It's lived in water and now it has to live in air. This change is huge to the baby's physiology and maternal infant skin-to-skin -skin contact supports it so that there is a successful change to breathing with the lungs and to being able to transfer blood circulation in a very different way to what it was before. And the baby has to cope with the new temperature. The mother warms it and in that way the baby learns that there is a temperature but the mother helps the baby regulate. Not just temperature, not just heart rate and breathing, every single thing in the baby's physiology is regulated by the mother. At the same time, in these thousand minutes, a number of different hormonal systems in the mother's brain are being fired by the baby and they need to be wired in these thousand minutes so that the maternal sensitization can be activated. So in the first thousand minutes the baby is making the mother's brain able better to care for it and the mother is helping the baby's body and brain adapt to extra uterine life. The skin-to-skin -skin contact stimulates in the mother uh, a host of different responses uh, and oxytocin stays high and the key feeling for the mother is the sense of feeling safe. And this sense of feeling safe she's able also to share with the newborn. And so she needs to have skin-to-skin -skin contact for that to happen and she needs to be supported by somebody in the process. Then the feelings change from being safe, aware, to being totally focused on her infant. And this follows when oxytocin and dopamine connect. The feelings that dopamine induce are ones of reward, of joy, of happiness. And there's a kind of addictive, compulsive quality to her caring for the baby makes her feel that she's really the most important thing in the universe and she gets this excitement and that's the driver for mothering. So these kind of feelings are triggered in the mother by skin to skin contact and that makes her able to care and this becomes easy, instinctive, natural and it becomes deeply satisfying and rewarding. That's oxytocin. It's love in the sense of mother's love. Skin-to-skin yeah, -skin contact provides a stimulation that is deep pressure contact and temperature together. The spinothalamic a technical term and they go to the amygdala of the brain which is the emotional brain they make the emotional brain feel safe together with smell which comes from skin to skin contact near the breast this makes the baby's brain approach it's not a movement approach it's a social approachness orientation in the brain and so this approach together with the smell the baby follows the smell and it's coming from the areola glands in particular. And in this way the baby learns to focus its attention on the nipple. And when it finds it, it is born knowing how to suckle. So the first thing is suckling. So suckling comes first and then breastfeeding. Skin to skin is the place that makes breastfeeding. So. Uh, the one comes before the other, always. Indeed, the father should attach to the newborn baby. And uh, while the mother has many different hormone systems that the baby has to fire and wire, the father has only one system. And 30 minutes of skin-to-skin -skin contact, an hour, 
but even 30 minutes is enough to connect the father's dopamine reward center to his oxytocin center and that produces a profoundly different quality of fathering but as in the mother and the father this is only possible in a window a window of opportunity which we call a critical period when the father's brain has been prepared for this if you try and do this on the father in two three days time you will not get that same effect So the concept of the doula is that uh, is well known from anthropology and history. The constant uninterrupted presence of another woman I have attributed to the effect of oxytocin. And keeping oxytocin high is reproductive fitness. The higher the oxytocin, the more the reproductive fitness. Now, the doula protects oxytocin during labor, but then the mother often ends up alone. But we need to continue protecting the oxytocin after labor. So in the first thousand minutes, it's the oxytocin that's doing its job. This is a time the mother is often abandoned. The kangaroo mother care, skin to skin contact, doula, is the kangaroo. The kangaroo protects the oxytocin through the first thousand minutes by ensuring zero separation, skin-to-skin -skin contact. It can be with mother or father or even with a relative and with support for suckling uh, and keeping this connection. The mother should never be alone. In this way, her oxytocin stays high, the cortisol stays down and these reproductive behaviors and all the hormonal connections can play themselves out as they should. So the kangaroo is providing this unique, this new thought processes of protecting the oxytocin after birth. Kangaroo implies also preterm infants, and they need this kangaroo and skin to skin continuously even more. It's not that skin to skin is good for preterm babies, it's normal for all babies. Big babies can tolerate separation, small babies can't. It's not that skin to skin is good for them, it's that separation is bad for them. And so the kangaroo is able to support the parents in doing continuous skin to skin. And it may indeed, as I said earlier, include using a grandparent or some other close family member that will provide continuous skin to skin contact. This is profoundly effective for producing better preterm outcomes. It is a common saying that oxytocin is a hormone of love, but as we understand the underlying biology, oxytocin is originally a hormone for caring, for pair bonding, and many other things. And reproductive fitness is the key, but oxytocin produces love, yes, but of a very specific kind, to the family. And so, Love is not the right word. The technical word we use is called affiliation, family connection. And so it's about the closeness of the clan. Tend and befriend is a oxytocin behavior. And so um, oxytocin is a much broader thing. However, hormones are only messengers of something higher up the brain is wanting to accomplish and hormones never work alone so oxytocin will work with vasopressin to produce the baby oxytocin will work with endorphins uh, to make the early childhood period endorphins are uh, morphine like analgesic substances so oxytocin works with other hormones and primarily in the reproductive and social sphere. The word love is used quite loosely. Uh, there are other hormones that make us fall in love, for example. There are other hormones involved 
uh, in sexual intercourse. All are things we use uh, as understanding love. But oxytocin is the close family love and the deepest love between a mother and its child. So what we understand from this neuroscience is that skin-to-skin -skin contact, zero separation, continuous skin-to-skin -skin contact, early breastfeeding, gives the baby the right start to life. The analogy I like to use is that of a, launching a rocket into space. You can tell if things are going to go well at the very launch pad. If the launch is not successful, you will never get to the top. You might get up there. But it's the launch that matters, it's the beginning that matters. I go so far as to say that it's not the first thousand minutes, it's the first thousand seconds, which is for transition to extrauterine life and early sensitization and early maternal changes. And once those have gone well, the thousand minutes will go well. And once the thousand minutes are going well, the thousand hours are easy. And then the thousand days of early childhood development is a breeze. What we therefore know is that early childhood development, by the time your baby's brain is two years old, everything is in place for its future, for better or for worse. If the previous two years were not good, we call this, in the broader sense of early childhood development, toxic stress, adversity, does impact the lifespan. At two years, we can measure a secure attachment as an accurate predictor of the lifespan trajectory of health, both physical health and emotional, social, psychological health.